Welcome to this video on rational functions. We'll learn some basics, move on to reciprocal functions, their graph, and then asymptotes. Here is a lesson with our grade 8 student Abhinav. If you want, you can join my classes and learn more. Hi, Abhinav. How are you doing? I'm good. So today, what do you want to learn? Uh, I'm going to learn about rational functions. So what are rational functions? Do you have any idea? Uh, no. No. Okay. So we'll start from fresh. I know you know uh, linear functions and quality functions so far. Correct? Yeah. So we'll now, I'll share with you a uh, whiteboard and then uh, we'll work out something. So that you understand what are rational functions, okay? Okay. So the topic for us today is rational functions. So you know what are polynomial functions, correct? Yeah. Okay. So let's begin with polynomial functions. The polynomial functions, let's write this as p of x, can be written as x to the power of n, which is a leading term. So it will have a coefficient, let's say the coefficient is a n, plus a n minus 1, x to the power of n minus 1, plus so on. So till, let's say, a 1 x plus a 0, a constant term. So here, I've written a polynomial where a n belongs to real numbers and the exponent n belongs to whole numbers, right? We also sometimes say uh, positive integers. So it cannot be negative. So those are the polynomials, correct? As you know, you write f of x equals to, let's say, 2x cubed plus 3x squared plus 5 plus let's say 5x minus 3, for example, is a polynomial. Okay? So yeah. the highest power gives you the degree of the polynomial. So that becomes the degree of the polynomial, highest power, correct? Yeah. And this becomes the leading coefficient. So for polynomials, that much of review is enough. Now we'll get back to rational functions. So now, again, what are rational functions? Rational functions basically are ratio of polynomials. You can say R quotient of polynomials. Quotient means divide, right? So if I have yeah. a function r of x, I could write it as something in the numerator, right? As a function of x and something in the denominator. Where n of x and d of x are both polynomials, right? So both are polynomials. And of course, denominator cannot be zero. So we have a restriction that the denominator is not equal to zero. So this is called restriction. Is it okay? Yeah. So that is what a rational function is. Now let's take a few examples and then we'll get in more details. Is this part clear to you? Yeah. So for example, if I say a function f of x is equals to 2x plus 1 over, let us say, let's say 3x minus 1. Now, it is a rational function. And here, as you can see, the denominator cannot be 0. That means x is not equal to 1 over 3. So that becomes a restriction, correct? And this is one of the examples of rational functions. So I'm just giving you a few examples of rational functions. 
we could have a rational function, which is kind of like this, g of x equals to 2x minus 1 times 3x plus 2 divided by x minus 1. You could write the polynomial in terms of its factors as given here. So in this case, we know x is not equal to 1. So it always has a restriction. You get the idea because the denominator cannot be 0. Correct? Yeah. Okay. So you have clear idea about this. We'll begin with the parent rational function. Okay. So I'm calling it parent, the basic. I would rather say reciprocal function. So this function is y equals to 1 over x. You see simplest form, correct? That is the okay. simplest rational function. I will say this is the simplest. Correct? Well, you should remember one thing that even if I write a polynomial, even if I write y equals to 2x, this is also a rational function, right? Yeah. Of course, the denominator is a polynomial, which is 1 in this case, correct? But when I say 1 over x, it really gives you the characteristics of a rational function. So we'll begin with 1 over x and try to understand what this reciprocal function is. So let's try to understand reciprocal function. In function notation, I'm writing this as f of x equals to 1 over x. Now clearly, the denominator x is not equal to 0, right? Can you tell me how will this graph of this function look like? Like a curvy line? Right. L like this, right? Yeah. It looks like this. Perfect. Now, you could actually sketch the graph very easily by taking some values of x. And then the value of f of x is 1 over x. So let us take some values. If I take 0, I get 1 over 0, right? Not defined. One over zero is not defined. <clears throat> Actually, at this point, we have a vertical asymptote. I'll tell you what a vertical asymptote is on the graph. It will look something like this. So at x equals to 0, you can see there are no y-intercepts here, right? It is yeah. approaching the y-axis, right? So what is happening here yeah. is that as x approaches 0 from the right-hand side, for example, y approaches positive infinity, right? Do you see this part? Yeah. And as x approaches 0 from the negative side, y approaches negative infinity as going downwards. Is that clear to you? Yeah. So by definition, what is a vertical asymptote? Vertical asymptote is the value of x, in this case the line, which is x equals to 0. If when x approaches that point, then y approaches infinitely large value. It could be positive or negative. Is it okay? Yeah. That is what this is. So, in the domain of this function, as you can see, we can now write down that as far as the domain is concerned of this particular function, we can write this as x belongs to real numbers, but x is not equal to 0, correct? Yeah. Similarly, we can also write the range of this function. What is the range? Can you tell me? x belongs to real numbers. And y is also not equal to 0, correct? Yeah. So this value is called the horizontal asymptote.
And its definition is when x approaches infinitely large value, y approaches a finite value, which in this case is 0. Even we see when x approaches negative infinity, y approaches 0. And this implies that y equals to 0 is a horizontal asymptote. So we have a horizontal asymptote right now. Is it OK? Yes. So the, the function approaches is never there at this point, and therefore we have y not equal to 0. Right? So we have vertical asymptote and a horizontal asymptote, and you have understood why it is so. Because 0 is in the denominator 1 over x, then 1 over 0 is very large value. Therefore, we have vertical asymptote as x approaches 0. When x in, approaches infinitely large values, y value approaches 0. 0 is a real number, and therefore, we have a horizontal asymptote. You got the idea now, right? Yeah. OK. Now, let's move forward with this function 1 over x and look at, look at its transformations. So let me clear this. We start with function y equals to 1 over x, and now let's say g is, let us say, 1 over x plus 1. So now what happens? As soon as you say x plus 1, the restriction goes that x is not equal to minus 1, correct? Yeah. And the graph of this particular function will now have a restriction that it is not minus 1. So at minus 1, we get a vertical asymptote, right? So we have a vertical asymptote. So this is a vertical asymptote at x equals to minus 1. Clear? Yeah. Now, you can sketch this graph. If I put x equals to 0, I get 1. So I could sketch this graph as something like this. The behavior is kind of similar to what earlier graph was. The only thing is that the graph has been shifted left by one unit, right? So it's horizontal translation. And you see that the graph actually moves left. And if you can calculate this value, putting x equals to 0, we get a value 1 here. So that becomes the graph for the function, right? So this is your 1 over x reciprocal function, correct? Yeah. We will now focus on reciprocal functions more, different type of reciprocal functions, right? So let's take reciprocal of different types of functions. Let us say. So what we do just now is, let, let me just take y equals to 1 over, let us say we have 2x minus 3. This is also a reciprocal function. So this is actually reciprocal of 2x minus 3, right? Yeah. Okay. So now, if I have to sketch the graph of y equals to 2x minus 3 from the graph of, let us say, 2x minus 1, 3, oh, sorry, 2x minus 3. How will I sketch? This is what I'm going to show you. So what I'm going to show you is, let me rewrite this. I'll use function notation. It'll be easy for us. So let us say we have a function f of x, which is 1 over 2x minus 3. And then we have another function g of x, which is basically 2x minus 3. Can you tell me how are these two functions related? F of x is just a reciprocal of it with the same functions. F of x is reciprocal of g of x. Clear, yeah, right? That is yeah. how they are related. Now, if I have to sketch, and let us say, if I sketch g of x, g of x is a straight line, very easy for you to sketch, right? Yeah. So I could sketch this like this, which is a straight line, and we know for sure that this y intercept here is at minus 3, right? And the slope is 2, right? So for yeah. every unit, it goes up by 2. So if I plug in here, uh, let's say 1, I get 2 minus 1, right? So this is like, let's say this is 2, and this is minus 1. And next step, if I put 2 here, so 2 times 2, 4 will give you plus 1, correct? Yeah. 
So that is the line which we are talking about. And those are the points. Now, if I have to sketch f of x, let me also get more values here. So what I'm going to do here is I'll just write down some values for you. So I'll write down x values and from here, g of x values. Is it OK? So if my yes. g x values, let's say minus, minus 1. If I plug in minus 1, I get minus 2 minus 3 as minus 5. If I put 0, I get minus 3. And if I put 1, I get minus 1. For 2, I get 4 minus 3, which is 1. So I have these values. Let's just put 3 also. 3 times 2, 6. 6 minus 3 is 3. Right? Yeah. We got these points. So I've already plotted three points. And let's say at minus 1, we have a point which is minus 5. Okay, and uh, at uh, at x equals to two, this is um, uh, x equals to two. It is uh, one. Right, then four is on x equals to two, right? And x equals to three. It is three. Now we're talking about inverse, reverse, reverse. So reverse really means one over, right? Yeah. So if I write one over, so that means f of x, which is one over g of x. So this will be minus one over five, correct? This will be minus one over three, correct? This will remain as minus one, this will remain as one, and that will be one over three, correct? Why wouldn't it be minus one over minus five? No, no. Re reverse of y value. Oh, g of x value, right? G of x value. 1 over g of x. So g of x is minus 5. So 1 over minus 5. Right? So oh, yeah. this is the value. So what you really notice at this point, which we did not calculate, which is 0, what is the reciprocal of 0? Infinitely large. So at this point, I'll have a vertical asymptote, right? Yeah. So we'll begin by drawing this vertical asymptote. So we have this vertical asymptote. And now, at 1, we have the value 1 itself. So this point is common, right? And at minus 1 also, we have a common point. Do you see that? Because the yeah. reciprocal of 1 or minus 1 is same number. We call these points as invariant points. These points are called invariant points. They do not change, right, in both the values, right? Okay. Yeah. Now, if I take a value 3, I'm getting a very low value. 1 by 3 will be where? Like one, over, 1 over 3 will be kind of very close to this place, correct? Yeah. And clearly, if I have a positive value, which is very close to this, it is going to, because this is a vertical asymptote, it is going to be very high, correct? So as yeah. I go close and close to this value, I get higher and higher values. Correct? Because this value is y value is very low, right? Zero. Is it okay? Yeah. So my graph will look like what? Let me sketch. It will be a typical reciprocal function, right? Where it is, and if I put zero here for x, then I get two minus three, which is minus one, which is clearly shown here, right? So, uh, so that minus 1, so add 2, minus 1. That is how my graph is going to look. Is that clear to you? Yeah. If I put 0, I get minus 1 over 3. Right? So this point here is minus 1 over 3, the y-intercept, for the reciprocal function. So I could actually sketch the graph of reciprocal function using the values. But now I will show you the logic. If you look into the reciprocal values, then what is the reciprocal of positive value? Is positive, right? Yeah. Reciprocal of negative is negative, correct? Yeah. Reciprocal of large value is small value, correct? Yeah. And small value reciprocal is large value. Right? So 1 divided by yeah. 10 will be 0 0.1. Okay? 
1 divided by 100 will be 0 0.01, much, much smaller. So, if I divide 1 by 0 0.1, I'll get 10, a larger value. This is what I'm saying. So, if you see the red line, in that case, you see, wherever we have the x-intercept, we have vertical asymptotes, right? And yeah. as we go away from the zero, the graph actually rapidly decreases in this portion, right? So, comes yes. there and at one, we have invariant. So, we also saw that we have invariant point at plus and minus one, right? We have y equals to plus or minus. Is that clear to you? Yeah. So, that is how we could sketch the reciprocal function. Now, I will take reciprocal of a quadratic function. You know the quadratic functions, right? Yeah. Let me write the quadratic function in factored form. Let's say x plus 1 times x minus 3. Can you sketch the graph of this function? It is going to open up, right? It has two x intercepts which is at yeah. minus 1 and at plus 3, correct? Yeah. So, where is the axis? Axis for this function is average value minus 1 plus 3 divided by 2, which is 2 over 2, which is at 1, correct? So, at mm -hmm. 1, we have axis. So, I let me draw the axis here. This is not the vertical axis. This is the axis, right? Yeah. So, if I plug in 1, so, what is f of 1 equals to? That is the vertex, right? So, 1 yeah. plus 1 times 1 minus 3, which is 2 times 2, which is minus 4, correct? Yeah. So, basically, if I want to sketch this graph, this graph is going to look like something like this, parabola. Okay. Where this vertex is now is at minus 4, correct? Yeah. And this axis is at x equals to 1. Now, tell me, how will I sketch reciprocal of this function? That is to say, I now want to sketch g of x, which is equal to 1 over f of x. Or you can say 1 over x plus 1 times x minus 3. How will I sketch that? Yes, from where will you begin? If I have to sketch from a graph, reciprocal of that graph, then from where are we going to begin? You can begin with the zeros. Reciprocal of zero is a vertical asymptote, right? Yeah. So we'll begin with the zeros and we'll draw the vertical asymptote right here. At both these zeros. Now, that divides the whole plane into three intervals. Do you see this? We have three intervals now, three planes. The two vertical asymptotes divide into three portions, correct? Yeah. One before the first vertical asymptote, which happens to be at x equals to minus one. Then the one between one and three, and the third one at x equals to three, right? Yeah. Now, let's look into each part. On the right hand side, somewhere we'll have plus one value, correct? Yeah. And somewhere we'll have minus one value, correct? Yeah. Reciprocal of one and minus one is one and minus one itself. So those are the invariant points, correct? So you can mark those points. They are not going to change, they are common to both. The function and its reciprocal, correct? Yeah. What is the reciprocal of minus 4? Minus 1 over 4. Perfect. So, we'll mark minus 1 over 4. And we know we have vertical asymptotes. Negative reciprocals are negative. Positive reciprocals are positive, correct? Yeah. So, the portion of the graph which is negative, its reciprocal will also be in the lower half, negative, right? So, yeah. joining these critical points which we have, right? Minus 1, minus 1 over 4, and minus 1. Again, we have this smooth curve, and that is going to approach the vertical asymptote. It cannot cross it, correct? Yeah. So, you get the center portion. The portions on the side are like 1 over x, which we saw 
And we can always sketch them like this. You see this? Yeah. Like one over x reciprocal function. So there you go. We have the graph of our rational function where the denominator is a quadratic function, correct? Yeah. Did you understand the method of sketching reciprocal of a function graph? Yeah. I'll now test you out. Okay, we'll erase this. Okay, Abhinav, get ready. So. A cubic function. Tell me, how will you sketch graph of, let's say we are given the function f of x, correct? Yeah. Now, what I want really is, I want the graph of g of x, which is 1 over f of x. It is reciprocal of f of x. f of x is a polynomial. We see a smooth curve there. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Tell me, how will you sketch the graph? Mark the zeros. Very good. I love that. Mark the zeros. Perfect. Mark zeros. Then okay. what? And then you find where, like a uh, local value. Okay. So mark zeros and put vertical asymptotes. Let's put vertical. Let's not wait. Wait. Okay. You get one mark for this. Every little thing you do, one mark each. You get full mark there. So get mark zeros, write them as vertical asymptotes. Is that okay? I'm writing V A for vertical We can write down their equations also quickly. Now, what are the equations? So let us say, let's give some value. Is it okay? Let's okay. give some value. One, let me write this as six, and let me write this as a 10. Is it okay? So we'll say yeah. this vertical asymptote is that x equals to minus 10, of course. And this is x equals to 1, and this is x equals to 6. Yeah? Vertical x. Now, let us give a value of this maximum as, let us say it is 5. And let's say this maximum value is minus, let's say 4. Now tell me, what is the reciprocal of 5? 1 over 5. 1 over 5. So we get this point, which is 1 over 5. And reciprocal of minus 4 will be 1 over 4 with a negative sign, correct? Yeah. So those are your points. Now, somewhere, the graph will also have 1 and minus 1, right? So let us say, yeah. this. we'll just draw a line. And I'm drawing this line as y equals to 1, right? It's not a yeah. horizontal lesson, but just y equals to 1. Right? Of course, it is not to the scale, y, and y equals to minus 1. So what I get from that line, invariant, invariant points. Mark these invariant points. Is that clear to you? Yeah. Are you understanding the method? So easy, right? So yes. then you mark invariant points. Where we are looking at y equals to plus minus one. Clear? Yeah. More or less, we're done. And in between, we local maximum, we call those points in between as local maximum. Local maximum and minimum. Is it okay? Yeah. And we do that reciprocal as we did. <laughs> now, I think we have the vertical asymptotes. We know that positive side will remain positive, negative side will remain negative. Correct? Yeah. Let's work on the negative portion. We have this local maximum here now, right? And we have those invariant points, correct? Connecting mm -hmm. these, we can actually go towards the asymptote, right? Do you see this? Yeah. Smooth curves. And on this side, it is on one end, so it have a horizontal asymptote here and then this. Do you see like one over x graph, similar to one over x? Yeah. On this side, now we'll, let's go to the positive half, where everything is positive. So in the positive half, this is invariant, right? It will go like this, horizontal asymptote. Got it? <clears throat> Correct. So we have a horizontal asymptote, which is y equals to 0. So all these reciprocal functions, there will be a horizontal asymptote, which will be y equals to 0. 
because x is in the denominator. If x is very large, 1 over large number is 0. So it is approaching infinity, that value approaches 0, right? Yeah. So we have one horizontal asymptote, three vertical asymptotes, so many invariant points, some local maximum connecting them, we have our graph. We can also find the y-intercept, right? If you know this point, reciprocal of that will give you a point here, and then you can connect very accurately. Correct? So let's join these invariant points, three of them, and the local minimum, right? And go mm -hmm. towards the vertical asymptote. Do you see this? You have the graph. Is that clear to you? So the blue line is my final graph for G of X. Do you see, without calculations, without much calculation, we have sketched a function, which is reciprocal from the given graph. You get the idea? Yeah. That is how simple it could be, provided you understand the concepts. Are the concepts absolutely clear to you? Yeah. Very beautiful. Okay. <clears throat> So I can erase this, right? Yeah. Perfect. Now, I'll talk about a bit. We'll look into another kind of a rational function. Now. We have understood what is reciprocal, right? Yeah. Reciprocal function is also a rational function. But now, I'm giving you a different kind of a rational function. We are now talking about rational functions of the form f of x equals to ax plus b over cx plus d. That is <coughs> ratio of two linear functions. Is that okay? Yeah. <coughs> now here, let us try to calculate different values. How will you find the x-intercept? X intercept is which point? Where y is zero, right? Correct. Abhinav, what is x intercept? I think your screen is frozen. Yes, Avina. Good. Okay. So, Avina, what is x intercept? Uh, zero. Where f of x is zero. So, I'll put yeah. f of x as zero and then calculate. So, I have ax plus b over cx plus d. So, that means the numerator should be zero, right? That means ax plus b should be equal to zero because only zero times anything is zero, right? So, from here we can calculate that ax equals to minus b, x is equal to minus b by k, correct? Yeah. So, this ratio, this numerator should be zero to get the x-intercept. Now, how do you find the y-intercept? For y-intercept, x is zero, right? Yeah. So, let's put zero here and find the y-intercept. That means we are finding f of zero. So we get 0 plus b over 0 plus d. So it's the ratio of b over d, correct? Yeah. So for this graph, we got the x and y intercepts. And where is the vertical asymptote? Can you tell me what is the value of vertical asymptote? The well, denominator should be 0, right? Yeah. So cx plus d equals to 0. So x is equals to minus d over c, correct? Yeah. And um, do we have a horizontal asymptote? Yes, we have, but we have to look into it, okay? <clears throat> Let me take you to a fresh page, and then I'll again describe all these characteristics. Is this all clear to you? Yeah. Okay, let me clear. So again, we'll take a rational function. Let me call this time r of x equals to ax plus b 
over Cx plus B. We calculated the X and Y intercept. We said, well, to calculate the X intercept, we know Y equals to zero. So substituting zero here, we will get what? We get Ax plus B equals to zero, right? The numerator should be zero. So that means that minus, uh, let me write minus B over A as the value of X, correct? So that is the X intercept. Now, to find the Y intercept, what do I do? I put X equals to zero. And then what I find is that for Y intercept, our value is what? Or let me write Y, right? Let me write y equals to easy for us. So y equals to putting x equals to zero, I get b over d, correct? Yeah. Now let me find the vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptote we calculated that c x plus d should be equal to zero. That means x is equal to minus d over c, correct? Now comes a typical thing, which is how do we find the horizontal asymptote? Any suggestions? How did you get E? No, it is not E. C, C. Oh. Sorry, C. Horizontalism. Now, horizontal asymptote is when X is approaching a large value, right? It could be plus or minus infinity, correct? Yeah. And Y should approach a real number, we say L. Then we have a horizontal asymptote, Y equals to L, correct? How do we find this value from the equation? That is the main question. So I am showing you a very general method of doing it. So we are saying y equals to ax plus b over cx plus b, right? Yeah. Now look here. I could take x common, right? So if I take x common, I get a plus b over x, correct? Yeah. And the denominator, I get A, uh, C, plus D over X, correct? Yeah. Now imagine, if X is approaching large value, then B over X will approach what value? Zero? Yeah. And D over X will also approach zero, correct? Yeah. So these two values approach zero, correct? Yeah. X and X cancel, correct? So you're left with what? You're left with Y equals to A over C, right? I should say approaching, right? Yeah. Because we are saying X approaching. You get the idea. Yeah. Therefore, we have a horizontal asymptote, which is Y equals to A over C. Is that clear to you? Yeah. So that is how we can get all the characteristics. Basic curve will be similar as 1 over x, correct? Yeah. So actually, I could sketch this. I'm just making a small sketch here. We'll take an example and make a bigger sketch later, where we have a vertical asymptote. Let me say it is a positive value like this. And we have a horizontal asymptote, perfect. And we have a graph, which looks like what? It looks like 1 over x, right? Is that OK? Yeah. And we know all the intercepts. Is it clear? Well, is a given thing. Is yeah. this clear to you? Yeah. Let me take a concrete example. Y equals to 2x minus 6 over, let us say, 4x plus, plus 1. Now tell me. Can you find vertical asymptote? Yeah. Tell me what is vertical asymptote. I got minus one over four. Very good. Now, can you find the horizontal asymptote? Yeah. Tell me. Uh, X. 1 over 2. Okay. 
because it is the ratio of the leading coefficient. So horizontal asymptote is ratio of leading coefficient. When I take x common, right? You, oh, yeah. me, you get the idea, right? Yeah. Right? Right. Horizontal asymptote is leading. How? Can you find the x uh, x intercept? Okay. X equals three. So means the numerator x equals three. Perfect. Y intercept. Minus six. Got it. You got all the values. So yeah. now you can also find uh, other points also, but these are very critical points to sketch. Is it okay? It makes sense. Yeah. So we can begin with the vertical asymptote, which is minus one over four. So the drawing is not to the scale, right? It's for our convenience. So this is my vertical asymptote. I'm writing x equals to minus one over four. You have to label, right? Yeah. Horizontal asymptote is at half. See, not the x-axis. It is like half, right? So. Is that clear to you? Yeah. The x intercepts and the y intercepts are also calculated. We have x intercept at x equals to three. And let's say this is three, okay? And the y intercept is at minus six. Let's say this is minus six, okay? So joining these points, we do get a curve on the right hand side, which could be kind of like this. Do you see this curve? Yeah. Similarly, on this side, we'll have a curve which will be like this. To get good curve, one, you could do is, actually speaking, this will be symmetric about that point where the asymptotes intersect. But what you could do is make a table of values, correct? So just make a table of values. Take different values of x and convenient for you to calculate values. And we need some values on minus side. So take x values minus one, let's say minus two, right? So moving that side and then calculate what y is and plug in those values so that you get your point. Is that clear to you? Correct? Yeah. So you could take x as half also, which is a good value to work with. You can take x equals to half. You can take x equals to minus half. Also. Is it okay? But take yeah. three, four points. And so you will get a graph, which is going to look like what I've shown you. Now, is this absolutely clear to you? How do we sketch a rational function, which is quotient of two linear functions? Yeah. Very good. So let me summarize, and you help me in summarizing. What did we learn today? Okay. So can you tell me what did you learn today? Yeah. Okay, let's go so to the main screen and then then we summarize. Yes, I want you to use your memory and then you know just okay. say whatever you learned today. Yes. So we first are learning about what uh we first reviewed what a polynomial is, and then we learned what a rational function is, okay. which is basically a reciprocal of a normal function. Which is a ratio of polynomials. Oh, yeah. Reciprocal yeah. is a special type. Is it okay? Yeah. So yeah. different yeah. cases, yes. In general, yeah. rational function is quotient of two polynomials, correct? Yeah. Very simple. Okay. So uh then you learned about what a reciprocal function is, which is one over whatever function? polynomial function, yes. Uh, of one over the function, and then we did some practice. Mm -hmm. Like if g of x equals two x minus three and f of x equals one over two x minus three. We graphed it based on the techniques, and we also did that with quadratic functions. And then we found that the way if it's two polynomials as a ratio, so one polynomial, we found how to find out the x-intercept by setting y equal to zero, the y-intercept by setting x equal to zero, the vertical asymptote, which is minus d over c, and- Denominator is zero, right? Yeah, yeah. And the the denominator is zero. Yeah. In the horizontal asymptote by factoring out x and leading x. coefficients ratio. Yeah. Ratio of leading coefficients. Okay. Yeah. We learned how to graph that. Well, beautifully summarized. Now, last thing. 
where do you think we can use rational functions in real life situations? Uh, we want the, one of the variables, independent variable in the denominator, right? Because we want something in the distance of speed into time, correct? But yeah. what is time? Time is distance over speed, correct? Yeah. What is speed? Speed is distance over time. So wherever the variable comes to the denominator, it is a question which refers to application to rational function. You get the idea. Yeah. So wherever we'll have examples where we want to find the time given the speed and distance. In that case, we are using a rational function. And questions could be that if two persons are running, I mean, let's say driving, the other person drives his car an hour after and then overtakes, right? In that kind yeah. of a situation, oh, when will that happen? It is a rational function because it is distance over speed, right? So yeah. we have something in the denominator and makes it a rational function. Rate. Rate is a very common example. Rate of anything is what? Something. Rate is dollars per mm -hmm. unit, right? Yeah. So whenever, let's say, we buy some t-shirts and then we sell some t-shirts, keep some t-shirts, in that example, the profit, if you want to figure out, then we have a rational function because whenever you want to find the rate, you are dividing by total cost by the number, right? Yeah. And we don't know how, what is the number. That becomes a variable and we have a rational function right there. So many situations involving rates, distance, speed, time, we will be using rational functions as our uh, model. Right, so we, that is why we are learning this stuff. Is it okay? No, rational is very important. Correct. We'll end our class here today. I hope that was uh, well understood by you. And uh, we'll continue from here in the next class. Is it okay? Yep. Okay. Great. Thanks. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.